I so listen in my previous real video I talked about a tweet made by a Twitter account called Tonari no YJ in this tweet they suggest that cosmic fear mode Garo has become so powerful that he can shake the entire universe this Twitter account has an official relationship with the One Punch Man manga because of this many people use this statement as evidence whether direct or supporting to scale cosmic fear mode Garo from around multi solar system level all the way up to multi galaxy level. In that video, I said that I postponed another longer video in order to work on that one. This is not that longer video. Rather, this is a video that must be made as a precursor to the longer video. This is because the topic I'll be discussing in this video will appear in the longer video which will ultimately affect not only the conclusion of that longer video but also the veracity of said conclusion. Given the isolated nature of this argument compared to the ones presented in the longer video, I decided that it would be better for me to tackle this topic on its own. So within this video, I plan to discuss whether or not Garo's gamma ray burst scales to the tier people tend to put it at which is large star level. Before actually getting into discussing it, I'd like to make something clear. Within the comments of this video, don't try to use Saitama and Garo supposedly destroying many star systems if not galaxies as evidence to support that this feat actually scales to large star level. The reason I say this is because that's a whole nother topic I'll touch on very soon with the video discussing it likely exceeding 40 minutes in length. Also, as I said previously, the reason this video exists is to talk about an argument that can be used as supporting evidence for the other argument. Thus, I'll be isolating this argument in order to determine its validity on its own before determining the validity of the other argument. But with that being said, let's get into the discussion. The argument claiming Garo's gamma ray burst scales to large star level goes like this. In chapter 165 of the One Punch Man manga, Garo unleashes an attack he calls Gamma Ray Burst following his attainment of Cosmic Fear Mode. He unleashes his Gamma Ray Burst in an attempt to show a kid how powerless the heroes are, meaning that this attack is meant to be extremely powerful. Which makes sense. After all, not only did Saitama make comments which imply that it will decimate the earth, but it also blew Saitama away for a few moments. Furthermore, it produced light brighter than the sun and it made one hero question whether or not it was also someone's special move that Garo copied due to the sheer power of the attack. On top of this, we are given an explanation of what a gamma ray burst is directly after Garo unleashes his and in the beginning of the next chapter, we are given some info on the basis of Bang's water stream rock smashing fist and Garo's all life eradication fist alongside some additional statements. These statements basically say that Bang's fist uses and applies a knowledge of the flow of energy behind raging currents and tidal surges and puts it into his body to develop a unique and powerful technique. Using an extension of this flow, that is, the knowledge of how energy flows behind things, Garo is able to replicate the techniques of others as shown in the Hero Hunter arc. However, after having gained divine power, Garo gained knowledge on the flow of all energies within the entire universe alongside the behavior of all forces in the universe. To put into perspective what that actually means, Bang's techniques come from having knowledge of the flow of energy behind raging currents and tidal surges and applying that knowledge. Garo on the other hand has gained knowledge and can create techniques from the flow of all energies. Thus, if Garo is creating a gamma ray burst via completely replicating the energy flow of gamma ray burst, then it stands to reason that his gamma ray burst scales to that of gamma ray burst in the real world. Supporting this is that whenever a character replicates a flow of energy, they generally tend to exceed it in power. Like, Bang's punches vastly exceed that of naturally occurring raging currents and tidal surges. Garo's nuclear fission attack exceeds that of nuclear attacks which are some of the most powerful releases of energy via nuclear fission. Given gamma ray bursts generally release energy equivalent to 0.5 to 1 times 10 to the power of 44 joules or half a 4 to a 4, it would mean that Garo can produce and Saitama can withstand large star levels of energy. The main problem I have with this argument is that there isn't anything that directly indicates or necessitates that Garo's gamma ray burst produced by artificial means, releases energy that is comparable to that of naturally occurring gamma ray bursts. I'll break down each point step by step. For the first point, the statement surrounding the attack being very powerful is just that. 
It just means that the attack is very strong. These statements do not necessitate Garo's gamma ray burst scaling to naturally occurring gamma ray burst. The second point is that we are given an explanation of a gamma ray burst. This explanation, people argue, is meant to show that Garo produced an actual gamma ray burst. However, I do not believe the panel that is explaining what a gamma ray burst is, is meant to imply that his gamma ray burst rivals that of actual gamma ray bursts. Rather, I believe that this is merely the author explaining to a general populace or the average readers of this comic what it was that Garo just produced. Think about it for a second. I believe it is reasonable to say that the average person does not know what a gamma ray burst is. I'd even say that the average power scaler doesn't know what a gamma ray burst is. It is such a niche topic and has little significance in fields related to anything other than astronomy and astrophysics. Based on this, I do not believe the explanation we are given of what a gamma ray burst is is meant to imply that Garo's gamma ray burst scales to that of an actual gamma ray burst. Rather, I believe it is merely an explanation of what a gamma ray burst is to readers who are in majority ignorant to the concept. The summary of your third point is that since Garo is creating a gamma ray burst via completely replicating the energy flow of gamma ray bursts, his gamma ray bursts should scale to that of naturally occurring gamma ray bursts. Supporting this is that when a character replicates a flow of energy, they generally tend to exceed it in power. This is exemplified by Bang's punches vastly exceeding that of naturally occurring raging current. And Garo's nuclear fission attack, which exceeds that of nuclear attacks, which are some of the most powerful releases of energy via nuclear fission. To me, this is a non sequitur, since it doesn't necessarily prove its point and seems to be committing a causal fallacy by using correlation as a means to imply causation. Bang's attacks, vastly exceeding that of naturally occurring raging currents and tidal surges, doesn't imply that any quote unquote fist that is created via using the knowledge of an energy flow of an object scales above that of the natural object. It can simply be the case that the strength of the character themselves vastly exceed that of the natural variant of an object rather than becoming stronger than the object due to learning and applying its energy flow. These quote unquote fists have abilities that exceed your ordinary attacks in a variety of departments, whether it be strength, speed, range, etc. But again, this doesn't mean that all of that power or the reason it is that powerful is because of you learning and applying that object's energy flow. Simply put, learning and applying the energy flow of an object allows you to develop techniques that can exceed your ordinary attacks in power while not necessitating that you scale above or even close to the natural variant of that object. It's somewhat similar to how Goku's spirit bomb Kamehameha and Kaioken are abilities that exceed his normal strength. You can have attacks that exceed you in power. This is something that should be commonly known. For the last time, learning and applying the energy flow of an object allows you to develop techniques that can exceed your ordinary attacks in power while not necessitating that you scale above or even close to the natural variant of that object. All of this also applies to Garo's nuclear fission attack. The counters to all three of these points goes to show what I'm saying, which is that it doesn't seem like there is anything directly indicating that Garo's gamma ray burst is comparable to that of a naturally occurring gamma ray burst. All of the points in support of the argument that I'm countering either have another reasonable and more plausible explanation or the reasoning behind them is flawed. But with that being said, I'll now present arguments related to Garo scaling to large star levels of energy via this feat but are more specific. You'll see what I mean by this soon enough. Firstly, what if I were to use Garo's gamma ray burst being immensely small as supporting evidence that the gamma ray burst he created was merely an imitation of a naturally occurring gamma ray burst? Well, you could counter this by saying that when Garo used his nuclear fission ability, the spheres he created are massive but do not represent their full power. In simpler terms, the destructive capability of the spheres, i.e. their size, is not indicative of their power. Based on this, you cannot use the size of the gamma ray burst Garo created as evidence that it doesn't scale to large star level. However, based on everything I previously laid out, while this argument does not stand on its own, it does work as supporting evidence for my stance. The second point uses Garo creating a black hole to support his star or near star level scaling. It goes like this. When Garo teleports or uses his gamma ray burst, he creates what appears to be black holes. While these black holes don't eclipse entire planets or solar systems, they are sizable enough that you need over 100 times Earth's mass to create them. This means that, scaling wise, it will be somewhat similar to creating a planet with around a third of Jupiter's mass which would mean he'd scale the planet or near large planet level. There are many problems I have with this argument. Firstly, 
Unlike physical bodies like planets and stars, a black hole is a result of the escape velocity of a mass exceeding that of the speed of light with larger bodies creating larger black holes. Thus, a black hole is less of a celestial object and more of a spatio-temporal phenomenon. Because of this, it is very hard to estimate the amount of energy you'd need to create that amount of mass. You could try and use mass energy equivalents, but its application in fiction is heavily contentious and the discussion of this topic goes well beyond the scope of this video. Garrow also didn't create a specific amount of mass that became a black hole, if not he directly manifested a black hole. This makes the application of mass energy equivalents even more contentious, with one being able to counter argue by proposing that Garrow merely manifested a black hole rather than transforming an enormous amount of his energy into over a hundred Earths worth of mass. This leads to my second problem with this argument, which is that creating something does not necessitate scaling to it. I made an entire post about this a while back before I began making YouTube content. I plan to turn that post into a video as a part of my power scaling guide series at some point in the future. But to not regret take the entire post, I'll explain what the essence of it is. The idea is that there isn't anything that inherently suggests that performing a creation feat implies you scale to the thing you created. To be more precise, it doesn't inherently imply that there is a one to one or comparable ratio between the amount of energy you input versus the amount of matter that comes out. The ratio is ultimately unknown. Furthermore, to create something, it is inherently necessary that you have an ability that allows you to create. Given that it is not intrinsic that you physically scale to an ability, you cannot claim that it is inherent that you scale to something you create. To learn more about what I mean, check out the attack power video I made. But basically, I argue that the existence of abilities in fiction allows you to differentiate between activation energy and direct energy input. This means that just because you caused an effect, doesn't mean you, the person, scaled to that effect. I like to use the analogy of pressing a button and launching a nuke. The act of pressing the button is the character activating their ability, while the effects of the detonation of the nuclear warhead is the ability's effect. The inner workings of the nuke and launching mechanism is the ability itself. Thus, merely launching a nuke, i.e. activating the ability, does not mean you, as the person who launched the nuke, can produce the same or similar effect as the nuke i.e. the effect or power of the ability based solely on the fact that you put it into motion. Based on this, even if we were to say that Gyro created a mass equivalent to over 100 Earths, it still wouldn't change his scaling. This is unless you can prove he directly transferred an amount of energy into an amount of mass, with his ability merely being a direct transformer of energy to matter rather than anything other than that. The third and final point I'll touch on in this video is probably the simplest one and the one people are waiting for me to mention. That point being that the gamma ray burst Garo created is depicted as being very powerful, it is called a gamma ray burst and it looks like a gamma ray burst. Therefore, it is most likely a gamma ray burst. Given that gamma ray bursts generally release energy that will place them in the large star level ranges, Garo's gamma ray burst is a large star level attack. I've basically already explained this away, but I'll do so again in a more simplified manner. The problem I have with this argument is that I'm not necessarily saying Garo didn't create a gamma ray burst. Rather, I'm questioning whether or not it would scale to a naturally occurring gamma ray burst based on what we know of Garo's manifestation of his gamma ray burst. As I previously explained, Garo, based on his knowledge of their existence and energy flow, was able to manifest his own version of a gamma ray burst. This means that it is artificial, as he did not create a star that was in a state where it could no longer overpower its own gravity, causing it to collapse into a black hole. Rather, because of his knowledge and application of that knowledge, he was able to imitate the phenomena and fight with it. This imitation of it does not necessitate it being large star level, which is the main problem I have with saying that it scales to that tier. Rather, it can simply be the case that it scales off of him as shown with Bang's attack. Simply put, it is a technique that scales off of Garo himself rather than naturally occurring gamma ray bursts. To conclude the entire video and answer the title's question, no. I do not believe that Garo's gamma ray burst scales to large star level, or to be more precise, I do not believe you can reasonably scale it off of naturally occurring gamma ray burst based on the available evidence. My stance is that it is simply Garo applying his knowledge of the energy flow behind gamma ray burst to create a technique. This technique is called the gamma ray burst and looks like a gamma ray burst but nothing necessitates that it scales to naturally occurring gamma ray bursts. Thus, I believe it is merely an imitation of a gamma ray burst. And yeah, that's basically all I wanted to say on this topic. I'm gonna try and drop the extra long video surrounding the serious punch between Garo and Saitama next week. Adios.